When you hear people talk about the future superstars of the CDL, some common names you will hear are the Tiny Terrors or Dashy or maybe even Standy, but I think there's somebody who is being forgotten about in these conversations. What's up everybody, welcome back to Unscripted, where today we are breaking down why Draza, yes Draza, has the potential to be a future superstar of the CDL, and as always, we're doing it off the script. So I think there are some traits and some characteristics of Draza's that point to him being a star in his future, and I'm excited to break them down for you today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like down below as always, and also leave a comment with both your thoughts on the video and your thoughts on Draza's future potential in his career, and subscribe to the channel as well if you want to see more videos like this one from me in the future. I appreciate all of that more than you would ever know, and let's hop right in to the video. So the first thing I think about when I think about Draza and his future superstar potential is his versatility and his play style. I think we've all noticed throughout the year Draza has sort of been a guy that can play any role for the LA Thieves. Usually in the CDL, at least in this year, when people talk about flex players, they pretty much are usually just talking about a team's second assault rifle player. However, with Draza, that's not the case. He is clearly a true flex player. When he was running an assault rifle full-time for the LA Thieves, if there was a situation where they needed somebody to pull out a third of some machine gun to put more pressure on the map or play a different route or whatever else, Draza was the first guy to step up and do it, no questions asked. Now that he's running a second SMG full-time for the LA Thieves, he is the first guy who will grab a third assault rifle if they need it, no questions asked, and he'll still play very well. That speaks a lot to his versatility and his ability to play the flex role and play it in a very effective way. Then there's also uh, his play style. I think you'll see in a lot of these clips, and just if you watch Draza play a lot, he goes forward more often than not, but he is not stupid about it. I think the best way I would describe Draza's play style is like controlled or calculated aggression, meaning he will get up, he'll put a lot of pressure on the map, and he will get in aggressive positions on the map, but he also won't play stupid. He'll still play his life in those situations, but his general trajectory when he's moving across the map is forward. That has treated him very well so far. He gets a lot of engagements, and that's they're a pretty fast-paced team, the LA Thieves, and he's a big reason for that. He's most comfortable when he's able to go forward, and wreak some havoc on the map and just make plays. But that's not all he does. He can make plays in the hill too, you know. He's probably better at search, but in the objective game or in the respawn game modes and hard points, he will hold down a hill, staying alive, playing his life on the hill or around the hill in control, he'll stay alive on the point, whether on offense or defense, get a few kills and make the plays. So he's not just someone who's gonna forget about the objective and just run forward and just play his own life and not really have any regard for anything else. He'll still play the objective and he'll contribute in sort of a team friendly and winning approach. But he'll do it very aggressively, and that's what helps the team out a lot. You know, again, we've seen him do it on the AR this year. He, when he plays the AR role, he plays very fast. Now he's on an SMG role full-time, same thing. He's playing very fast and very effectively. So, so far, so good for Draza when it comes to his play style and his versatility on the map, and fans most certainly can appreciate that. Next up with Draza, we have a second very important part of being a superstar, and that is his personality. If you follow him on Twitter, you have noticed that he has... No regard, no regrets when it comes to talking trash. He will let you know that he does not give a F when he's playing on the map, and he will tell you about it. He'll let you know that he thinks he's better than you, especially when he plays better than you. He will let you know. And this is an important part of being a superstar because when you think about the true superstars in the league, they're not necessarily the best players. Like, you think probably like the four biggest players, let's just say, personality-wise. Skump, Formal, Crim6, Clayster, maybe? That sounds like off the top of my head, that sounds like maybe the four biggest stars. However, none of them I don't think are top four players. They definitely are not top four players, but they have the personalities. They've built their brands over the years, and all of those guys, when you think about it, they've all been playing for a long time. They are closer to the ends of their careers than they are to the beginnings, so there will need to be guys to step up and take their place in terms of personality, storylines, building the drama, and building the brands. And you think about some of the other top superstars just in terms of their playing abilities, guys like maybe the Tiny Terrors, Shotzi, uh, Standy, guys like that, Insight maybe. They aren't really known for their personalities. They're just known for getting popularity based on how good they are at the game, and they let their, their performances speak for themselves. And Drowsy, you know, don't get me wrong, you have to be good if you're going to talk the way he does. You can't be horrible and then go out there and talk trash, but he's not. He plays well, and then he lets you know about it. So that personality of Drowsy, that sort of his way of building a brand as being like a lovable villain, I almost would call him, because if he the way he talks trash, people might hate him, but everybody loves Drowsy because he's just so lovable. And sort of another thing is his play style matches his personality. Like, if you go out there on Twitter and talk trash about how good you are and how you're going to run down somebody's throat, and you sit in a corner and play credit, yeah, that might be effective, but it doesn't really match your personality and your talking. That's not the case with Draza. He just plays the way you would expect him to based on the way he tweets, based on the way he talks, and based on his personality. So that's a big thing that I think gets slept on a little bit with Draza, and that personality and that willingness to talk and play the villain role will definitely pay dividends as we move to the future, especially with some of the guys that currently play that role probably only having a few more years left in their competing careers. 
And finally, with Draza, we go to his skill level because your personality, your aggressive play style, or your versatility do not really matter all that much in terms of your superstar potential if you just go out there and get fried every time. But he certainly does not do that. So, so far, since he's been running an SMG, so this is the stage four major and then a stage five, he has a 1.17 hardpoint KD, a 1.35 search and destroy KD, and a 1.09 control KD. That's all very good, obviously. Since the start of stage five, I get small sample size, so take it with a grain of salt, but still, it's meaningful in my opinion 1.19 kd and hardpoint that is tied for 12th in the league so far 1.88 search and destroy kd tied for fifth or that's fifth outright in the league so far and then a 1.07 control kd in stage five and for the season i mean his numbers are pretty good there too 0.99 in hardpoint 1.15 in search which is tied for fifth in the league and then a 1.07 in control tied for 12th in the league so you see from that, his best mode has definitely been search and destroy on the individual level so far this year. That's been his best mode, you know, for a while now. But he still plays well on hard points and controls too. And like I was saying earlier, even if his numbers aren't super high, which they actually have been for control, his KD's been very good. His damage is high too, because, you know, like I said, he plays such a fast pace. But even if his numbers aren't high, he still makes winning plays and he helps his team win matches. And this, this is the most important stat of them all. When Draza has played this year for the LA Thieves, their record is 9-6. and six. When he has not played, they are 7 and 11. So take out all the personal stats. That stat right there is all you have to know. When Draza is in the lineup, they are much more likely to win games than when he is not in the lineup. So all of these reasons sort of coupled together, I think Draza has a superstar potential. He has the versatility and the personality. He has the skills to go with those traits. So all of this adds up to superstar potential down the road, especially when some of the current superstars are no longer in the scene. I am very excited to watch Draza as his career progresses. So that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like down below and leave a comment as well with your thoughts on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well if you want to see more videos like this one from me in the future. I appreciate all of that so, so much. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a good day today, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.